Our sign language interpreter tonight is Yulan Zale. Now, we begin with a looming financial crisis in the country, and tonight, a report by the Office of the Controller of Budget is painting a gloomy picture with statistics indicating that a whopping 83% of all revenues collected by the government have been spent on debt repayment. Now, the Controller of Budget, Margaret Nyakango, who appeared before the Budget and Appropriations Committee, also revealed that both foreign and local travel by government officials and their delegations is further compounding the country's strained financial situation. Let's begin our broadcast with our very own Chem Tai Gowin. There is an area here that we feel has has let us down. The controller of budget, Margaret Nyakango, went to the National Assembly Budget Committee bearing bad news on the state of the economy. Our debt as of 30th June was 10.25 trillion, which is over the legal ceiling. An 18% spike in public debt means the exchequer will have to dig deeper to raise funds to meet its obligations to settle the 5.2 trillion external debt and the 4.83 trillion domestic debt. While KRA is targeting to collect 2.7 trillion shillings by the end of the 2023-2024 financial year, the greater chunk of the collections would go into debt servicing. The control of budget stated that out of the 4.18 trillion budget in the 2022-2023 financial year, which heavily relies on KRA collections, public debt was set to consume 83% of the revenues, leaving a paltry 17% for other government programs. This means the government will still need to borrow more loans to sustain its operations. Development expenditure has already dropped by 14%. What it means there is that we budgeted more than what we actually did. There are fluctuations around fuel, but I want to assure Kenyans that we are doing our best to stabilize. Even when we have winds and storms which are global in nature, I know we have where what it takes to be able to weather the storm, and we are doing that. The control of budget took issue with the public expenditure at both levels of government, especially how recurrent expenditure continues to gobble up more public funds. For instance, out of the 3.6 trillion shillings allocated to the national government, 38% of the funds catered for salaries, allowances, contributions and wages of staff at the rate of 542.46 billion shillings. Foreign travel has also been flagged as a leading drain of public funds, despite a memo from the head of public service limiting official travel for government officials. The control of budget revealed that state officers consume 20 billion shillings in foreign and domestic travel. The National Assembly emerged the highest spender, sinking 4.8 billion shillings into local travel and another 1.5 billion shillings into foreign travel. Hospitality, too, took up 8.6 billion shillings with the office of the president leading the park by taking up 2.34 billion shillings while the Paul's body IEBC came a close second, spending 2.1 billion shillings. Despite President William Ruto's orders to MDAs and counties to settle approved pending bills so as to facilitate the circulation of monies and boost the economy, pending bills have instead risen to 727.74 billion shillings from 685.62 billion. Under the prevailing circumstances, it is unlikely that the trend will change any time. Nyakango recommends that it is necessary to match existing loans to the project it funded to establish whether the country is getting value for money. Another proposal that is likely to start controversy was a suggestion that the National Treasury explores other currencies in seeking funds so as to minimize pressure on the shilling, which continues to depreciate by the day. Further, she urged the government to cut its coat according to the size of its clothes. Chemutai Goin, Citizen TV.